right, opening show, Scott Cole, Nick Mazesco in the house. So we've done a lot of shows together, just uh, never in this format. Anyway, we've sat in many green rooms, Nick. Uh, we've gone to many restaurants, eating coffee cake, discussing the sports of the day. And, uh, you know, you're an Ohio State guy. I'm a Clemson guy. So we're just naturally hate each other from the get go. <laughs> what? Oh, what that? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. That's the one you sleep with, I right? Love you. <laughs> this is this is the wife gets very mad it it takes up a lot of space um but no i you know it's it's fun because it's this is one of those things where i feel like you're, you're just you're it's us just sitting at a table like we might be virtual but like it's this is so many of those breakfasts and dinners and in between shows and like just enjoy sitting in here and I, I like to imagine people are sitting at home equally screaming at what I'm about to say, because that's what usually you do to me is just <laughs> yell at me for my stupid opinions. Uh, well, let's get right to it. We're going to talk about a ton of things. We, uh, we'll, we'll talk about Juwan Howard, all that going on, the lackluster all-star weekend that we had. Of course, Steph Curry might have saved it a little bit with his heroics. Uh, LeBron James, basically... Um, I'm going to call it trip nepotism when we get there talking about his son. And, and if you want Bronny, you also get me a two for one combo. Um, and then we'll see how it goes. When we talk about Tom Brady, is he really retired? I'm sure we'll get some Aaron Rodgers talk in there to Sean Watson. Where's Russell Wilson going to play all that kind of stuff before the end of the, before we get there. But let's go ahead and start off with this thing at Michigan. I am sitting in Fort Worth, Texas with the lady friend. And you know, it's one of those places where you can't avoid watching it. So when people start fighting, even though Wisconsin is up by a trillion, you are like, Hey, what, you know, I'm stop eating my wings for a second, put the slice of pizza down. And I'm going, what the heck is going on here? You're a big, big 10 guy. This is just something you don't see in the big 10. No, not usually. I mean, and and especially, you know, when it happened, handshake line, that's usually, you know, we're wrapped up, we're out of here. Um, I mean, listen, obviously I've got a little bit of bias towards uh Jawan <laughs> Howard and 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 the uh the U of M faithful. Um, you know, I just watching it happen, I was sitting there and I just couldn't believe how quickly it took off because it seemed like there's that quick moment between him and Greg Gard of I'll remember this and that quick touch of the elbow. And then it turned oh, into yeah. pushing and shoving. And I'm like, this is where it ends. And then Jawan Howard standing at what? Six, eight throws that big right hook over the top. And I'm sitting there going, oh, this is all of a sudden we have mayhem. And it was so out of the blue in not a controversial game. Wisconsin won that game handily. There was the Michigan was not in That's that part of the game. issue. Right. It's a little I mean, in Wisconsin's good. Right. They're they're ranked in the top 15 for a reason. But that's if you, I don't know if you can call it a punch, because if it is, it's one of the worst punches I've ever seen. I don't know if Not it's a, a good slap. One. No, it's no. sort of like a, some sort of slap and grab. Uh, nevertheless, do you agree with the punishment? Five games, 40 grand. I mean, he's done for the regular season. Come come back in the postseason. Uh, but do you agree with the punishment? No, uh, Scott, I mean, the answer is. He should have been suspended. I mean, again, I, I guess at the end of the day, he's suspended for the regular season. Cool. If it were me, uh, he wouldn't be on the bench the rest mm. of the year. I, I don't think you can you can put him back out there. I, I think at this point, like, he's lucky he still has a job. You're a coach of one of the top programs in the country. You're representing for these young men. And he said it in a statement, listen, I'm, I am, I, I, we talk about Michigan men and the representation we have for the university, and I didn't do that. But here's the thing, you failed yourself right there. And by the way, can we just point out for a second that he can get all mad at Greg Gard for calling a timeout at the end of the game, but he was full court pressing with 30 <laughs> seconds left, down by 15. Like at the end of the day, you weren't winning that game anyway. You still thought the game was going on. So why shouldn't the other team? If it was me and I was the... You know, University of Michigan, Board of Regents. John Howard doesn't touch the bench for the rest of the year. I don't think you fire him, but at the end of the day, he can't represent this university in the Big Ten tournament. He can't represent them in the NCAA tournament because this is going to hang over the program's head for the rest of the year. Yeah, and it, uh, he is remorseful now. It was a long statement. We're not ESPN. We're not going to get into the you know me reading something for for three minutes of the statement he released. This was said by Jawan <laughs> Howard and I quote. But, you know, uh, it took some while for some remorse. He was not remorseful in the post game, uh, So it kind of took like someone to kind of, you know, guide him. I mean, that's why we all have PR people and agents and managers and all that kind of stuff. Um, do you I mean, you know, on the last thought on this topic, I mean, do you think the handshake line should be done? I'm talking all teams. Now, I think coaches 
out of respect, they are adults, especially at that level, go over and shake someone's hand, right? Where if it's the NFL, you meet at midfield, you shake hands. If it's basketball, you meet at midcourt. Hey, nice job. Great playing, you know, yada, yada, yada. But there is something about, and we even experienced this in an esports league that I called the NBA 2K League. We had a handshake line get into some pushing and shoving and and, and bad punching. Uh, so it, it just seems to be, especially in this COVID world, it just seems to be a, a bad idea right now. Yeah, it, it's it's interesting because I, I think we saw during you know height of the pandemic the games would end and you just had that sort of like wave to the sidelines and then they just go their separate ways. I sort of thought it was corny. I don't think they should get rid of handshake lines. Listen, at the end of the day, like whether they're an 18 year old player or a coach, you're all adults at this point. Like we should be able to get through a handshake line. It's one of the great traditions in sports. I still go to, I I think of all the traditions across all sports, my favorite is still the end of the Stanley cup finals. Everybody's shaking hands. Even when Sean Avery (laughs) is mad at Martin Brodeur and calls him fatso after the interview. Um, I, th- I think the handshake line is important. I think it's important to showcase to the world that, you know, this is still athletics. We are still playing a game out here. There are people out there with real problems, and we can still finish a hard-fought game and show respect to the opponent. And when things like this happen, you have to punish accordingly. But I don't think it means, like, it's not like if there's one fire at a McDonald's, we shut down all the McDonald's, okay? Maybe that McDonald's is just bad at their job, and Jawan Howard shouldn't coach the rest of the year. I lost the metaphor, Scott, <laughs> but I don't think that this should shut down okay, handshake lines. Okay, in hockey, you do need a lineup, right? You're on a slick surface. Like, you don't... You don't need everybody scattered around, but I do think on a on a basketball court you can kind of spread out, and you know maybe you say what's up to the guy that guarded you or someone that you played AAU with, or whatever. But I I think at some point the structure of it just needs to be abolished. Like if you want, yeah. Does it just does it just go NBA style where they're yes, just sort of yeah. dapping each other up at half court where they yeah. find each other and after interviews? I think and stuff. that's it. Instead of lining sure. people up, it sounds like. Something that's uh, that's forced, right? Like, you know, and some people are just bad sports. And if you're a bad sport, they just go to the locker room, right? It's, it's okay. It's okay to it's okay to do that. So, yes. Juwan. Juwan, I'm looking at you. Go, go hey, I'll remember that. I'll remember that what you said. I'll remember that. Uh, yeah, I'll remember that. I like that he also, by the way, pulled the mask yeah. away to say that. Like, you couldn't hear him through the mask. Oh, I will remember that. And then he snapped his mask back. Like, cool, we Juwan, were, I guess. You know, uh, in high school, you? we were pressing a team up 48 one time. And just, I think sometimes as a coach, you just sometimes you lose you lose track of the game or whatever. I agree with the punishment. That's a lot of money because he, he makes a lot per game. Get, what, 40K, yeah, 40K was, was the, the fine? But, you know, he doesn't get paid for those five games either. So... I mean, I think right. it's close to like a three hundred thousand dollar, like two seventy somewhere in there. I was told there'd be no math, but we'll see. We'll see what that does to Michigan, right? Does it does it fire them up a little bit? And we'll, possibly these teams may be meeting in the Big Ten tournament or down the line. Let's get to the All Star Weekend, and I and and yeah. <sighs> we have to. Can we just go back talking about? Fighting? Here's the first thing I'm going to say. Uh, tip of the cap to Obi for Obi Toppin. The Knicks finally win something. Uh, I think a lot of Knicks fans. They can never take that trophy <laughs> yes. away from you. But it's bad. And and I think maybe the slam dunk yeah. contest isn't as romantic as we remember it, right? I mean, Aaron Gordon, Zach Levine, that's amazing. Jordan, you had Kobe winning. I mean, those, those Jordan-Dominique battles. But I think part of the thing I want to see is if you're not an all-star, I don't want you competing in anything. I'm okay with the rising stars, they can do that, right? Where you showcase the rookies. I think that's cool. But in the three point shootout and in the dunk contest, I want to see people that are all stars. There's like 24 people. Let's find, can we find three people that can dunk out of those 24? Um, because I think that's what made an excitement. Did some of these players do better dunks than Jordan did and Dominique did and Spud Webb, whatever? I, I think they are. They're more athletic, probably. Um, or even having to be more creative. But there's something about Vince Carter doing a dunk, knowing that he's an all-star, that he's one of the top 20 players in in the league at the time, than just some random guy, right? And I know they're not random because they're in the NBA, but like, if you're not the best player on your team or the best one or two, three best players on your team, I really don't care. Like, Obi Toppin, uh, he, he's, I think he's a fine player and – you know, but like nothing about seeing him dunk the ball gets me excited. I mean, nobody, I, the Warriors tweeted out a clip of Juan Toscano's Anderson's dunk and like put up a bunch of emojis and everybody went, 
<laughs> All right, Warriors, I appreciate you hyping your dude up, but nobody's getting out of their seats. Listen, here's here's the thing. The dunk contest itself, uh, focusing on that, you know, I think for sure we've probably reached a point where we've had 30 years of dunk contest. There's a lot that's been done. There's only so much the human body can do. It's not like we're reaching a point where we can do, you know, 540s in the air. Here's the thing that surprised me, though. Not outside of... Cole Anthony putting on Timberlands. There was no theatrics at all. I These were the just dudes doing I do. drugs. I know we've come to that like, point where least... people got to jump over cars and, and all that sure. kind of stuff. They've I mean, been doing props since the first I mean, dunk contest. Like, that's nothing new. But, like, at some point, I think the biggest problem, Nick, is, like, you have to make a dunk in the first two tries. Like, that's it. Like this thing where it takes you three minutes to complete a dunk and like on your seventh attempt, you're like trying to get the crowd back into it. You're like, hey, man, uh, believe in me that I can do this. Like that's part of the problem. There's yeah, just I no flow. It, I had no idea that they could get like I hated the time limit thing because I yeah, felt like it gave people too either. many opportunities to miss. And somehow the three attempts, but it's not an attempt if you don't come downhill for the dunk. So they can just go and jump a bunch of times. And it's just like, what are we doing? Like. What if they ran the dunk? Let me run this by you. Ready. Okay, ready? They run the dunk contest. The first round, four people. Everybody gets five attempts. Okay? But each attempt is an attempt. And if you miss, you're going to get scored on your miss. So guess what? Maybe in your first couple, you're doing more conservative ones. But at least we're seeing dunks at that point. As opposed to, like, watching all of the... Watching Jalen Green go for nine tosses off the side of the backboard for between the legs three. Dude was never close. He was never close to throwing that dunk down. Give them five attempts. And guess what? If you go up and you miss five, then you get fined by the NBA or something. Like, I don't know. You wasted all of our time. You have to refund everybody who bought a ticket. But they have to do something to speed it up because waiting 35, 40 minutes where we saw a total of 10 dunks and a bunch of misses, like, cool, I guess. Like, it's so deflating to end the night like that because the three-point contest was really good. Like it was, I liked watching the three point contest. I, I get some people rip it cause it's just guys shooting open shots, but it was fun. Like I thought that, it was cool. That from Kat everybody won that's it, like, done it, they say it's exhausting. Like there's nothing about it that be. relates to the game. Like you, they literally have to practice. Except if you're Larry Bird, you don't practice it at all. But you know, no, most no. of those folks, like they, you know, they set up those racks and how you're going to run to the racks and just shooting all those balls in a certain amount of time. I think that's timeless. It's classic. Like no need to change that. Right. Like just keep doing it. But I also want to see all all stars in that event, too. Like, um, yeah, I do, too. I, I think making the all star game should mean something like at that point, like it is, you know, yeah. Does it mean that Steph Curry is going to be in the three point contest every year? Yeah, it does. And guess what? Then there's a whole new crown of having to beat the best three point shooter in NBA history in the three point contest. And then it really means something that you want it. Like, let's let's have Steph in it. Let's have some of the best dunkers out there. Have Donovan Mitchell back in the slam dunk contest. Let's ja make Morant. it mean And I something. think uh, they asked Ja, yeah. Man, or, oh you know, Ja about Ooh. it after the All Star game. I don't know if he was talking about. He says it should be higher. I don't know if he was talking about the rim. Or the money, please. 12, 12 foot hoops, but baby. Let's go. There. Let's and make it. Hey, out. just think about Spud Webb, right? He was, I mean, he was almost a, a foot smaller uh, than all the competitors out there. If you raise it up to at least 11, uh, I don't know if that does anything. But I think the main thing is, is like, it should be a celebration of the All Star instead of, yeah. I'll be honest with you, like, Kareem's walking out, <laughs> like, mid dunk contest. Uh, you know, Obi's raising his his trophy in the, the half the arena is empty. I mean, you're, you're seeing empty, people's yeah. backs. Right. Um, and I just don't ever remember seeing that. I remember seeing, you know, Jordan raising a, you know, a trophy or Kobe raising a trophy or events and people staying for that. Right. Um, I think it was just one of the biggest letdowns in the history of the all-star weekend, if not the biggest. I letdown. Mean, and I'll be honest. I mean, I'll be honest. I enjoyed watching the actual all-star game more than I enjoyed watching the slam dunk contest. And that's almost never true. But like I watched the, the all-star game on Sunday night. I saw better dunks in that one. They were out there having fun. I get it. There's no defense, but it was better than the, like, listen, it's better than the pro bowl, the pro bowl. I don't even know yeah. why we're doing it anymore. Like it's not even resembling at least in the all-star game. Like there's some level of offense being shown. There's no offense in the pro bowl. It's just, you know, people just messing around. I thought that the All-Star game was better than a lot of Saturday night, especially the dunk contest, because these guys were throwing alley-oops to each other and having fun out there. And I'm watching this, this All-Star Saturday night, the big conclusion with the slam dunk contest. And I'm sitting there watching YouTube on my phone trying to find something entertaining. Would you move the three-point contest at the end of the night? 
<laughs> right now, yes. I mean, again, but I, here's where I feel bad. Like, and it's no disrespect because I can't do it. But when your lineup is Cole Anthony, Jalen Green, Juan Toscano, Anderson, and Obi Toppin, that's not headline guys, dog. Like, it, you're not, you don't have anybody that's sitting there going, like, let me watch this, especially on the East Coast at 1030 at night. I'm going to stay up and watch these four. Like, there's no star power in it. But we no used to do that. Like, it. So, it used to be the right? event of the weekend. Like, it overshadowed the All-Star game nine times out of ten. Yeah, I, mean, I think when you have a lineup like that, you have to put the, the three-point contest. Because let's be clear, at least the three-point contest had guys who I knew. Like <laughs> Carl Anthony Towns is like a dude that I know. Like, I think for the casual fan at home who's looking for something fun, the three-point contest this year blew away the slam dunk contest. And if the slam dunk contest is going to continue to be, I don't know if they call it a young person proving ground, if it's going to be reserves, like guys who are pogo sticks but only score eight points a game, you got to move it back in the day because you've just... Watching that crowd empty <laughs> out during the last two, when Obi Toppin's final dunk meant nothing That's because a too. there yeah. was no score on the other side. It's like, what are we doing? Yeah, because there's the lowest score possible. I, I think, I mean, that horse, let's just say we beat that horse. Uh, it was not good. They need yeah. to fix it. I just want to see all stars dunking it. And I don't care if they're worse dunks. Uh, and by the way, you know who also beat that dead horse? I mean, uh, Reggie Miller <laughs> they and went Dwayne in. Wade. They, they were, went in relentless they, they went oh in even God. the next night during the all-star game they were like okay that's the best dunk we've seen this weekend like <laughs> yeah like dog they, tnt did not hold back let's we'll switch to the game um curry saved the weekend to be honest with you yeah uh i don't know what got into him uh he hit he hit the first shot of the game i thought he was going to make the last shot of the game ended up being lebron i mean he said that was perfect for some you know two kids kind of the I don't know. I, I thought they played up Curry being born in Akron, you know, being born in that area. I thought they played that up too much. He's a North Carolina guy. Dog, I'm from Ohio. He's, I didn't know he's, he's a North Carolina guy. Like, His dad cool. played for the Hornets. He went to Davison, right? I mean, he's a Charlotte guy through and through. But nevertheless, when it's in Cleveland, I'm sorry, that's Ohio's your home state. Uh, we got to do what we can. <laughs> we got we to gotta do what we can. Um I, I was supposed you know to go and miss the flight, and I, I was not sad at all, like zero sadness. I'm like, what's the weather? Zero sad. Um, but, you know, he, he almost breaks the record for scoring, certainly made 16 threes, which is an insanity. We should do a whole podcast on how the three-point shot might be ruining basketball as a whole. But um, sure. it's just impressive, right? We know he's the best shooter maybe of all time. Um Certainly from distance, certainly from off the dribble, he's the best shooter of all time. 50 points. He comes up a little shy of Anthony Davis's 52. I think he even went over and was trying to find out what's the most points ever scored in an all-star game. I think he was trying to get there. Didn't get there. Um, but I hate the format. Number one, I hate that it's not East first West. I'm an East first West kind of guy. Just like use the same uniforms from 1988 and just use them every year, right? Like it, it should feel like tradition. Like even the baseball all-star game has lost some of that. Like we've, we've lost some of the traditions and I'm up with the NBA because they're always being progressive. I think that's cool, but I just can't get into this turning the scoreboard off and like who's winning this quarter. I love the charity component. Sure. Like what's, there's no losing factor in that. Right. Uh, but like, I just hate the format. Like I, I, I just, I can't get into it Untime fourth quarter. Like, what are we doing? Like, um, shorten the game if you want to. But I, I for some reason, I remember those old R-Star games. Like, yeah, it was a little silly maybe in the first two quarters or two and a half quarters. But at some point, like, they're like, no, the East is not going to beat us, right? And I think some of that is, um, you know, you had guys like Kobe and Jordan that took every game seriously. I don't think LeBron is that kind of guy, right? And, he, and he's the guy with the torch right now. He doesn't want to be in the dunk contest. Um, you know, I mean, I appreciate it. I thought his post game was tremendous, you know, talking about Cleveland and, and what basketball means, means to him and all that. And he is a connoisseur of basketball and he is a great ambassador. But like, for some reason, I had, I have no interest. Uh, if I'm not working the all-star weekend, I, I really have no interest in watching it. Yeah, I l listen. I, do I think they should bring back East West? Yes, I, I think. I think picking some teams level is just dumb. It's I just get, dumb. I, 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 it's, it, well, can we talk about how does LeBron keep getting Steph and Giannis <laughs> on his team? Can we talk about the drafting of Kevin Durant? Like, how does he keep getting I Steph don't and Giannis? Seeing Durant out there, to be honest, but nevertheless, yeah, it's weird. Um, 
you know, do I like the format? Kind of. Um, I like the end of the game set point um, because it does, the action does pick up in the lot. Like, you do see guys, like, start to play a little bit of defense and it start to have a little bit of urgency. I thought it was apropos that, you know, LeBron hit the last shot. I will be 100% honest. As somebody who has been a Cavs fan my whole life and has watched LeBron leave twice, LeBron James coming out there in the pregame press conference saying, Cleveland, I'm your third all-star. <laughs> Bruh. No, you're not. Stop. I appreciate it. I love what you do for the community. Heck yeah, let's go. You're in LA. You're on an under 500 team, and now all of a sudden you want to be on Cleveland because Cleveland's third in the East. Like, I get it. No, I get I'm it, LeBron. That, it's cool. But don't say you're I'm our third all star. Like, it's disrespectful. <laughs> It's just disrespectful to Darius Garland and Jared Allen, who are leading Garland's a team that, a by the way, has no business being yeah. this good. They have no business. And let's point out, they also haven't had Colin Sexton all year, and they lost Ricky Rubio, and they're still third in the East. And we're sitting there, and LeBron's in there going, I'm your third All-Star. You're L.A. You went to L.A. Thanks for the title. If you want to be our third All-Star, you can come we're on talking about back. the bubble title? But for now, you're L.A.'s All-Star. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I was just rolling my eyes. I'm like, dog, like, come on. Like, dude, don't play us for dumb. We burned your jersey I'm once. We didn't burn it the I'm second time. I'm always here for LeBron slander. If you, if you bring this every episode, I'm good with it. Uh, let's talk about LeBron, no. right? Because, you know, certainly uh, the Cleveland media had one thing on their mind. Will you always be in L.A.? Will you come back to Cleveland? And he's like, well, if you, if you, if you happen to draft my son, I will be back in Cleveland. So he kind of put the league on notice, which I think is one of the biggest forms of nepotism I've ever seen. Like sh nepotism, Scott, that's tampering. <laughs> that's called tampering. That is people get fines for that. They lose draft picks. That's tampering. Yeah. Basically saying that if you're, if you draft my son, I'll come play with you. Like, you know, so, I mean, and this happens in college sometimes, right? We're like, all right, if you, if you sign with us, we'll, we'll sign your high school coach or your dad can come be the third string cornerbacks coach or whatever. But like, yeah. I mean, what do you, what's your first initial reaction behind this? Because he's not even eligible to play in the league until 2024. It's gross. I mean, and, and here's the thing. I get it from a fatherly perspective. You want to play with your son. Awesome. I love yeah, it. No problems you with know, that. You've no been qualms a big with that. part of his life. Yeah, there, there's no qualms with that. But to sit there and to put this out there, like, it is tampering. It is literally sitting there. Like, would you blame somebody, any team? Let's say they're the, you know, the Pelicans who have had so much fun with Zion. Or, you know, you're, you're a team like the Kings who are floundering. Are you not stockpiling 2024 20, picks to try to find a way to get to number one, to get Bronny just so you can get LeBron for a year? Because let's be clear, LeBron at that point will be what, 40? He will still be a very yeah, serviceable player. player. Sure, he will still 10, bring maybe. a ton of money to the market. He will sell jerseys. You'll have Bronny there. You'll have all the tickets you want. Like, it. that's tampering. It is just tampering. Adam Silver, pay attention. Like, I appreciate that he wants to play with his son, but he's literally sitting there and going, I am going to do it. I am determined to do it. It will happen, so make it happen. And now I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at all these teams, and I'm going, well, if I'm one of the poor teams in the market or in a small market that needs a boost, if I'm the Orlando Magic, I'm stockpiling <laughs> 2024 picks. I'm trading away everybody just to get LeBron and Bronny. And by the way, Bronny, as a player is a yeah. very good player and could turn into somebody very good. He certainly has the genetics sure. to do it. I just don't know why this is okay. Yeah, I, you know, I I mean, and maybe we've drug it out of proportion. You know, maybe he's just like, yeah, I'd love to play with my son the final year. But he kind of was like, I will. I am uh, going to play with my son in my final year. And so the question is, is that 2024? Or is he on like a Tom Brady route? He gonna where he's going to Yeah, sign? so, you know, I don't. Yeah, I don't know where this is going to lead. I don't know if that it's OK, uh, but it's certainly some drama that we're going to want to unfold. Uh, and maybe it's the Lakers right now that can end up with a pick because they're they're certainly trending the wrong way uh, out there in L.A. And that's when if we ever have a podcast, I'm sure we'll talk about Jordan and LeBron. I mean, they they listed the top 75 players. He was number two. Um, I yeah. don't think he can ever catch Jordan at this point. I mean. Uh, he'd have to win three, at least at least three more titles or something like that. And he's he's nowhere even really nowhere even close to that. But speaking of goats, let's talk about Tom Brady, because, I, you know, when, when we talked about doing this show last week, I was like, I got a bold prediction. Tom Brady of the 49ers. Like no one was talking about that. You know, next thing I know, everyone is talking about is Tom yeah. Brady going to play for someone else? Now, maybe not the 49ers. Certainly 49ers are on the list. 
Yeah, I think initially I was on the train of like he's retired. He he wouldn't announce he was retired if he was. But he never you said know, retirement. Not. He never said he was retired. And then he also said, and I think you never know. <laughs> you know what I mean? When they when they pressed him on, are you really retired? He's like, you never know. Yeah, and I think you know thinking about it more, the the story that got leaked before he got to do his announcement of leaving the Bucks. I think that might, I mean, again, if you're going to give credence to he's going to come back, he's going to play somewhere, it's that this story comes out, he has to be reactionary to it all of a sudden, sit there and go, yes, I'm leaving, but you never know what will happen, but I kind of want to do my own announcement, but also these guys leaked it. Like, at that point, you know, he was sort of backed into a corner of either being all in with the Bucks, which he didn't want to be, or being out, and the only reasonable thing to do was just sort of go, yeah, the reports are kind of true, and yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step away. I'm going to talk with my family. I'm going to figure it out. I think if he's going to go somewhere, it's going to be San Francisco. I don't. I was going to say I don't love the situation in San Francisco. Great coach with Kyle Shanahan. Who's, who's more like he a Belichick, right? He's and more no-nonsense. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'd say, I, I was sitting there, and I was going, well, the reason I don't like it is because I don't love their wide receiving court. Debo Samuel, I think, yeah. is a star, but Brandon Ayuk, you know, Greg Jennings, Kittles. all that. I don't I mean, come love. on. Tom Brady with any good tight end, right? Is it, detrimental. Does he bring in Gronk, though? Like, it, Gronk is his best friend who but he keeps bringing places. I was, Can you to, bring I was in thinking you were going to say, Kittle? was, is Kittles better than Gronk? At this point, way, like, way better. Like, twice oh, the yeah, player. He is. Yeah. He is. But he loves playing with Gronk. He has brought Gronk along he could to be tight end number two. Retirement. Right? Does Gronk <laughs> want to be tight end number two? I'm just saying. Can Titans wear the number 69? But I, that's, that's, I think that's really the only question at this fair. point. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice. Well, but see, here's the thing. But I was sitting there going, man, I don't love their wide receiving core. But then I think about all of Tom Brady's receiving cores, and apart from Tampa, he's never had a great Randy receiving Moss, core. So, it. yeah, it kind of makes sense. I don't love the division he has to go to, but and, – and I don't – I'm not sure if I'm buying into – Tom Brady won't care about winning. Like it's just a farewell tour sentimental play. Yeah. I think he wants to win no matter where he goes. And he's got that like competitor drive, but you got Seattle kind of on the downturn. We don't know where Russell Wilson is going to go. The Rams are going to be in some sort of cap struggle because they have to sign yeah. all these players. that just went out and won a Super Bowl <laughs> and the Cardinals. Kyler Murray's deleting his Instagram. I, mean, I don't know Donald what's going on. Maybe they, might have, they might have a lot of cap room. Who knows? Yeah, no kidding. Uh, and maybe that's the thing is I'm going to retire. Maybe oh, that's what all quarterbacks are saying. Okay, I'm going to retire right now, or I'm not going to make a decision. Aaron Donald, let Where's us know he? what you're going to do first. <laughs> then I'll decide, no, AD, then I'll decide if I want to come back and take snaps anymore. All of a sudden, Russell Wilson's going to announce he's back to the Seahawks because yeah. Aaron Donald's gone. He's like, yes, finally, no more. Kyler Murray is back happy So if he does Cardinals. stay retired or if he goes somewhere else, who's the quarterback in Tampa, right? I, mean, I think that's the big decision. Uh, I think you – Maybe see what Aaron Rodgers can do, even though I don't see Aaron Rodgers following Brady's footsteps ever. Um, Russell Wilson would be interesting uh, down there. I mean, they kind of tried that with uh, with the Winston, even though I think Wilson, you know, Russell Wilson's way better than Winston is. But there's 11 teams right now that have big uncertainty. You know, that's almost half the league has uncertainty at the uh, QB1. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where a guy like Carson Wentz goes, uh, uh, somebody who has had struggles, but there are a lot of people in this league who still believe that he has the tools. Could he be good down with Bruce Arians, a guy who has known mm. to deal with quarterbacks? There's still a lot unknown with Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson still is hanging in the they air with his legal there's troubles. There's at least going to be solved. nine cases that are, that are going to be disposed. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> does somebody take a chance on a guy who is – at his prime, a top seven quarterback in the league. Uh, um, the Browns might yeah. <laughs> want to get rid of Baker Mayfield because he's bad. I like how you threw that in the end. But uh, what I was going to say is Tampa Bay would do that. They would roll the dice. You know, you know, kind of certainly they've had players come in uh, that have had checkered past. And, of course, we're not the judge yeah. or the jury when it comes to Deshaun Watson, which is tough for me because, you know, certainly as a Clemson guy and someone who covered him and was there when he won a national championship with Clemson, when he was with the Texans, we'd done yeah, a lot of events that. together. And hey, I've done events with people that down the road it did not turn out, you know, that um, that what you're seeing was what you were getting. So, um, but I do think at some point he's going to play football is, again, right? Uh, yeah. And I think the one thing that that is true this year, which probably hasn't been true in a long time, is 
the draft is not the answer. I'm not a big Kenny Pickett believer. I'm not a big Matt Corral believer. I don't like Sam Howell is very good. Malik Willis, I think, has some upside, but that's sort of a, a Trey Lance style comparison. I don't think they're going to move up in the draft and try to take one of those guys as a project. I think Bruce Arians wants a veteran quarterback out there with a guy like Mike Evans, who's a veteran wide receiver at this point. I think he wants somebody who's established. He might look to Wentz. He might look to, I mean, is Sam Darnold's career dead in Carolina? I'm not sure how bad Sam Darnold was. They were talking to about maybe about Kirk Cousins Panthers going one. over there and, and them giving them the number exactly. six pick. Like, so Derek Carr is a big possibility. I know they're bringing in Josh McDaniels, but could Derek Carr be moved a quarterback who I think is very good and gets overlooked because he plays on a team where his best receiver is Hunter Renfro most of the year. <laughs> like you just don't have a lot of weapons out there because Darren Waller can't stay healthy. And Josh Jacobs has a, a pinky toe. Well, everybody wants something. the, the so, super veteran like a Brady or Rogers, or they yeah. are blessed to have a Josh Allen or, or Justin Herbert who's out there in San Diego. They're all trying to find that, right? Like the giants are hoping you know, you know, deep inside Jones somewhere and inside Daniel Jones, there's a Josh Allen. Uh, it hasn't happened yet. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think there's a long way to dig. But, you know, you're just hoping. Right. I mean, it, it is it is a roll. Of the dice it might prove that we're you know, where Brady's the number, you know, six round pick. Like you, you really yeah. I mean, Tony Romo came from out of nowhere. Right. I mean, it's 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 just weird when it comes to the quarterback position in the NFL. So. Uh, by the way, uh, as we close, uh, are you a NASCAR fan at all? Did you did you get caught up in the Daytona 500? Yeah, I always watch the Daytona 500 every year. I got a good friend back home who got me into NASCAR. I sort of fell out of it a little bit when um, I was a big Dale Jr. guy. Yeah. So once he retired, I sort of have been floating in this space where I don't really have anybody I'm rooting for. But yeah, I, I like I the new car. Um, Daytona the classic. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't like how yeah. long and, they and put a restrictor I'd, on it, and we just lost all of our yep. audience. But they put a restrictor on the fuel. Do you see, see guys, that? Where it's, it's like fun. these pit stops are yeah. taking forever now. It used to be the fuel's done, and once the car's lowered off the tires, you can go. So I think a lot of people struggled with that. Of uh, yep, the fuel guys like, no man, I'm still filling you up back here while they're trying to punch it down pit road. It looked like me at the at, when I was in college at the Exxon station going, I got eight dollars in my checking account. I got to get this to seven ninety nine. Stop. OK, like it, it, I think it's kind of goofy. Um, NASCAR has always been trying to capture that audience that's not yeah. watching NASCAR with things like the point series going away and moving to the playoff format. And now this um, I just think the important thing was it was a good race. Daytona can struggle because it's a plate track with follow the leader for a long time. It was a good race. There wasn't a lot of, of wrecks. Um, there's some great action last 30, 35 laps. Um, it, it should be a fun season. I think it's, there's a lot of, this is probably the most youth the cup series has seen in a long time coming up. There are a lot of 18, 19, 20, 21 year old drivers that are trying to make their way through the cup series. And Bubba, I think this close. I mean, they said when Jordan and Denny Hamlin built this team, they take, took Bubba Wallace, that it was some sort of token, uh, you know, drive, some sort of free ride out there. But he's proven on super speedways no, that really like, you don't want to mess around with that team. You know, when you talk about Toyota, you talk yeah. about 2311. They're, they're really, really good. Why? Well, hey, buddy, I enjoyed the yeah. first show. I know we'll be back next Blast. week. A lot of March Madness. And we're starting to make playoff runs. When you're talking about the NHL, you're talking about the NBA. Uh, we're starting to get to that point where those playoff pictures are starting to become a whole lot clearer. And of course, this NFL, Aaron Rodgers, uh, Tom Brady, whatever offseason drama. I think there's that those people making decisions, a big part of the dominoes of, you know, where the next season is going to lead, especially at, at the quarterback position. Yeah, we're what? two months away from the NFL draft. I mean, it's all starting to pick up. There is no off season uh, at, at this point. No. And I guess in America, that's why we like it. Hey, let's talk a little champions league next week, right? Let's, let's see how much, how many more oh, viewers yeah. we can lose. Uh, we, we, we heard. Come on in. <laughs> you see. Nothing like uh, a couple of Americans talking uh, European football. I'm sure that's what everybody wants to want to see. Well, Nick, uh, I, I enjoyed it. We'll be back next week with uh, a lot more here on the show. And if everybody that's watching, we're also, you can find us on our podcast anywhere on uh, that you listen to your podcast. Uh, we're going to start to get some of this live. You can see it on TikTok. I, I hear that's a thing. Uh, Instagram, Twitter. Sure. Someone, someone, someone already asked My us, Nick, where do we watch it? And I wanted to put everywhere, yeah. uh, but we are not All on MySpace yet. So... Till we get Not that yet. point. Tom will we'll friend us. 
That's that's for all you 40-year-olds out there who remember my name. You're welcome. Everybody enjoy your week. Uh, we'll see you next week on the show.